where drugs going? I never knew that. Wait, what? I said, where are the other drugs going? Why, why are you talking like that? It's a bad voice. It's a bad. Really kind of goes against the whole dark no, Batman no, no. thing. Are you kidding me? I worked on that like all day. I was like bat, sonar, high, squeaky. It's not scary. It's silly. I ran this by Al. I, I ran this by people I know, and they loved it. It's bad. Bad. Wow. This is embarrassing. Can I please show you another one? Sure. Where were the other drugs going? Fuck face. Ma Everybody, welcome to Nexicon episode three. I'm Michael Gaines. I'm gonna faint in this horse head mask. Well, then take it off, silly. <laughs> <laughs> it does look ravishing on you, though. I must say. Does it? It's a very fancy episode of the Nexicon. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the lovely people out there. Oh, well, I'm Casey Coglin. As if you didn't, you didn't already know my fame. So Casey, for some reason, decided to put on a hat, which, which actually I must say does look very nice. And then I and I said, I'm going to put on a hat. I was going to put on my Giants hat, and this is all I've got <laughs> that I could put on my head. And I'm going to have to. You don't always have to explain the uh, the pre-show, you know. Oh, I know. I I just thought it was a funny story. And if and if <laughs> I don't take this off, I'm going to faint. So I'm going to switch over to Casey's well, video right now. Mm -hmm. Take this off. Wow. Oh my goodness. How are you? I am fantastic. If you haven't already seen the uh, Batman Chooses His Voice video on College Humor, <laughs> yes. run, don't walk over to the website because that's how you get to websites is you physically run to them. And um, and really just everything on College Humor <laughs> is fantastical. So um, spend a few hours there. I haven't been to College Humor in a while. I used to go there a lot. And I don't, I don't know why. I just sort of stopped going there. And then Casey brought up this, this Batman thing today that we just played in the beginning. It was hilarious. And I wound up watching a whole bunch of other ones. It was hilarious. Hilarious. The, um, <laughs> the, um, uh, the Hulk one. Having sex I with the Hulk. You I didn't see that. that. Oh, it's mm -mm. funny. You Have you see seen it. the um, the Drunk History series? No. There's a whole series of them uh, with actual notable actors. This this guy, so he gets his friends drunk, like super drunk, and then asks them to recant a historical story, like someone's life or or a you know, just period in history. And of course it's just riddled with errors and, <laughs> you know, slurring and, and then, um, they have actual actors reenact like video to correspond with the narration of the drunk person. Oh. <laughs> and it's fantastic. And they, they reenact it word for word. So the slurring, you know, the errors they totally do. And it's, it's fantastic. Now, why can't we get people to do that for us? I mean, aren't our I don't lives know. interesting I enough? Mean, Right, I I can get drunk and recant, and then we just need somebody to um, stumble around to it. I guess I, I on video. Tell stories about <laughs> college or something like that. Because <laughs> that's about it. I can talk. No, that's actually what I can do. I can tell drunk stories about being drunk. In about college. your history. Okay. About my history, which quite really? frankly in college was not that exciting. <laughs> Mike's drunk history. I was like the only person in college that probably got drunk. Not drunk, but not. I never got to the point where I puked. I was never that stupid. But oh, well, I, <laughs> because I had seen like as soon as I got to college, yeah, I see people all these people. Do that are totally stupid. <laughs> I hate to be one of those people who. Dear puked. Starman, not everybody who gets drunk is stupid. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I yeah. <laughs> Let's get people drunk and talk about our lives. How about well, that? they drunk people pretty much do that anyways. <laughs> I mean, you really don't need to coax them into talking at length about anything, especially their life or, you know, the, the shit the crazy girlfriend did. <laughs> oh, that was a long, long, long decades ago story. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to news. <laughs> the the probably the biggest thing that happened this week is Peter Jackson announced that The Hobbit is actually going to expand to a third film. Yeah, it's that big. It's, you thought Hobbits were short. They're pretty big. <laughs> they need three films. Uh, you know, originally it was supposed to be two films, and everybody was very happy with that. It's been a long time since I read The Hobbit, and so I I didn't really remember how much was packed in there. But then when he made this announcement that they were going to expand it to three, everybody just flipped their lid. And, of course, yeah. then there are some people that are going, well... Peter Jackson makes all this money and everything like that. And I'm going, yeah, you know, he does make a lot of money, but he doesn't make a lot of money because he makes crap. He makes right, money because yeah. he makes good stuff. And mm -hmm. not for nothing, but Return of the King did win Best Picture. Yeah, so. and he wants to do justice to the book. You know, a lot of these stories that are based on books, they, they you know, either modify the story or they cut it off or they, you know, try to cram it into like one or two movies you know, if he feels that to actually do it justice, he needs three movies, then mm -hmm. more power to him. And apparently, before he could actually get the okay, he had to have, um, oh, the um, the estate, Token like, estate? sign off on Yeah, to sign off on it. Seems weird that they would have to sign off on something that had already been approved. I mean, just because they're making a third film doesn't really right. make it yeah, matter. Like it would, I guess it does. I, don't, I guess they have to renegotiate the contract. That must that has to be it. I, you know, not for nothing, but I mean, the, the token estate isn't making a mint off of this. They should probably just say, you know what, go, just go do it. And you know, we'll be I'm very sure happy. they're they're very strapped for cash. They <laughs> need um, these negotiations to go in their favor, and so yeah. I was reading, uh, I don't remember where it was an article about a month or so ago. Well, there was actually a period of time when you couldn't find Lord of the Rings. It was hard to find. Uh, and I think... I don't know what that time was. That must have been a long time ago. That was like the late 60s, early 70s? Or a something. long time ago. A long ago. time ago. And I guess That's after um, after Tolkien died in 73, there was, as what always happens when someone dies, there's a resurgence of his work. And so it became wildly popular again. And D&D &D came out couple years later 75 oh, i guess true and everything went up from there mm -hmm. so i'm looking forward to this uh, uh three I more think years is, yeah <laughs> what do you feel what do you think about having it in three films and does it doesn't does it matter to you no no the more the merrier like keep them going i mean it's not like they're not entertaining <laughs> let's let's have six who cares <laughs> i mean they're hobbits they're silly i mean it's it's fabulous. I'm all for it. Do as many as you like. I think that if Peter Jackson had a documentary on Tengwar and the languages of the elves and and all that, people would still go to see that. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, did you see the new Bond trailer? I did. It was on the front of uh, the Dark Knight Rises. The, no, it, there was a new a new new one that just came out today. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, then no, I didn't. Okay. Um, working. Daniel Craig again as James Bond, as everybody knows, is in Skyfall. And... Spoilers! Spoilers! Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus. Did I spoil it? Now I can't even. I can't even see the movie now. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, what did everybody think it was going to be a Sean Conner Connery hologram? <laughs> no, he could. Yeah, he could the hologram. He could still do it himself. What are well, you talking I know, about? but he's a little older. <laughs> Get George Lazenby in there. Oh Jesus! <laughs> no, don't don't laugh. I will bet you in twenty years they'll try to get Lazenby in another film somehow. They'll just like use pictures of him from years ago and and try to do that. But anyway, <laughs> it the Bond trailer looked amazing, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see this film. It's got some of the over the top stuff that are always in Bond films, but, but yeah, I mean, like any great action film, that's. I mean, where else are you going to see that? True. That's what I like about the Bond films is that if you try doing it um, like the Thomas Crown Affair, which had Pierce right. Brosnan in it, it was okay. But there's a style to the Bond films, and they keep true to that over the years, as they have. Like I was watching uh, Live and Let Die recently. It's a bit on the goofy side still. Um, well, Bond kind of always is, a little bit. Yeah, but the Bond of the 70s 
was a little different. Um, I like, well, late 70s, early 80s. Um, I, I, I still think to this day that Timothy Dalton gets a bad rap. I still think yeah. that, that Timothy Dalton was a very good Bond, but he came out at a time when people were still expecting like the Roger Moore type goofiness. And so mm. it was, I, I think that it was fine. Um, I still think Piers Brosnan was okay. Uh, I didn't think he was Yeah, bad. no, I thought he was, he was good. And Daniel I mean, Craig was great. I Yeah, I really like him. And the, a lot of people don't just because I guess his... His physique, he's he's a little bit smaller. He's not, I guess he's not as buff. I don't know. He's pretty buff. But I think the blonde hair, blue eyes thing really um, throws people too. But he's a great actor, and mm-hmm. I love him in everything I've seen him in. Yeah. You know, from Layer Cake on up. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a good actor, so awesome. We got shots of the new kid who's playing Q. Yeah, he's- yeah, yeah. That was in the preview I saw. Was it? Uh, oh, it was you a know really what? Long IMAX preview i'm sorry maybe what you it. saw was what was online today i just didn't think of that I, um because it was it was a long trailer yeah and yeah well in imax um before the dark knight i keep forgetting about that that they put the trailers out after the weekend so that people can go to the theaters and see it so yeah okay um yeah we see the new Q um again with the walter ppk um oh what else was there couple things i like how they they were kind of i mean this bond their story is kind of a prequel you know it's when he's first brought on and he's first hired and everything but and so you think okay this is going to be really really old but it's set in modern day Mm -hmm. and so q is like a modern day hacker Mm -hmm. and it's fantastic the whole (laughs) you know idea i just enjoy yeah so i'm looking forward to that it comes out in october and uh yeah. So tell us about this whole Doctor Horrible thing. Still making All right. news. So, um, I know Doctor Horrible just won't go away. No, <laughs> uh, Doctor Horrible was a, a project that um, during the writers' strike a couple years ago, um, a bunch of people and um, actors. I mean, it was written by Joss Whedon. Um, Neil Patrick Harris mm-hmm. is in it. Uh, Nathan Fillion, Felicia Day, I th- want to say Will Wheaton. I don't think he is, though. He For is. some reason, I always want to put Felicia Day and Will Wheaton together and everything. <laughs> um, but, you know, during the writer's strike, a lot of these people, when they were, you know, not really working, they put this little project together, and it was written for the web. It was meant to be a web series, and it was put out on the Internet and kind of just grew, you know, and just... <laughs> really exploded people loved it yeah super cult following um you know a year or so after that i saw it on netflix and it was on hulu and it just kept growing and growing and people were you know screaming for a um a uh, sequel and joss is you know announced that he is doing a sequel but Mm -hmm. alongside with that he announced um at comic-con that the CW was actually going to pick up Dr. Horrible. I mean, not that they're going to expand on it, but the original, like, three or four episode miniseries, they're going to show on CW. Yeah. When, now, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, now, like we were saying, you know, it kind of blew up, and a lot of people have seen this, and, you know, it's not like, oh, good, now it's on the CW, I can finally see it. This is setting a precedent for television and more importantly web television on forward Mm -hmm. up till now we've seen a lot uh where tv goes to the web you know it starts on tv and then they either show it uh like nbc or fox show it on their websites or you see it cut up on youtube or hulu you know but it starts on tv on the national on their cable or the um broadcast stations and goes down to what's kind of you know from uh the broadcasters like oh web tv or <laughs> you know internet TV. that's like the ghetto there's no money there we'll just kind of throw it out there who the hell cares but people who you know watch a lot of uh internet tv cord cutters everything <laughs> like that 
you know, we've been saying for years, uh, you're wrong. This is going to turn around. Um, just like how uh, digital ebooks are really kind of ramping up and taking over print books, we're seeing a turn for internet TV, you know, a revolution of pretty much the same caliber. Mm -hmm. And this just goes to show it where a web series, something that started on the web, is now going to TV. That's a, a total 180 about face. That's going backwards. So if the stuff that's starting on the web going to TV, that's the beginnings of the revolution. Yeah, that's um, that's one of the things that uh, Casey and I were talking about just before we started recording. I was going, well, why would anybody want to watch this on TV when everyone and their mother has already seen it? And yeah, the points that you just made are actually true. So... I guess maybe three more people will see it on the CW, but but this this precedent of going from the web to TV may wane wane <laughs> may wind up changing how distribution goes. Who knows? Like for example, not that I'm not saying that this would happen, well, it might. But let's. I'm just using this as an example. What if some of Twit was picked up for the for television? What if it were put on PBS? What if PBS said, you know what, we like this. Um, there are some people, oddly yeah. enough, that don't have an internet connection. I know it sounds a little strange, but I know several people that don't have internet connections. And just as we Great. have cord cutters, which are now regretting it for the Olympics, by the way, but it, it works mm -hmm. both ways. So there's going to have to be some sort of happy medium over the next few years. Yeah. And, um, and if you... Guys out there agree with me and you want this revolution to take hold, I strongly recommend you turn tune in to Dr. Horrible. Watch it. Give it a following. Give it as many views as it can. Mm -hmm. And that's tell those broadcasters. It's going to tell NBC, ABC, CW that, look, this is the direction we should be going in. There's money in web. This needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if anybody wants to distribute our show, you can contact the nexicon at gmail.com. <laughs> And we'll take cable access. Yeah. Won't we? Hey. Whatever. <laughs> no, don't laugh because my friends and I were actually thinking about doing a cable access show many years ago. Fifteen in years ago. No, no, not in college. It was Wrong. um it was about ninety five ish. And and we were um we were we put together a bunch of skits. And mm -hmm. we were going to distribute it to uh, local access. And I tell you, I, my, my friend uh, that was sort of spearheading this whole thing fell off the face of the earth. Never heard from him again. Phone number didn't, didn't work anymore. Um, his brother's company didn't work. Anymore. I don't know what happened to him. And he's That's not on sick. Facebook. He's not anywhere. I did a Google search he's not for him. On Facebook. Oh, my God. He really well, must be dead. You know, everybody's on Facebook. He was big on the internet back then. I mean, like, some of us that were early adopters of the internet. Like, I've been on the internet since 88, and people go, man, the internet came out around 94. No. <laughs> this is long, long before that. But his email address doesn't work. I, I, I'm thinking maybe something happened to him. I don't know. But I still have the original tape of what we were going to send to Cable Access, and I sort of want to put it on the web, but I can't because Dazzle. I don't want to piss anybody Dazzle. off. But there's some funny it. stuff in there too. Put it on there. Put it on there. Do that. But it's me doing skits. Does anybody uh, really want to see that? You YouTube. I don't know <laughs> if you know this or not. YouTube is chock full of idiots doing skits and then other shit too. <laughs> you need to put it's, it up. It's it's the, the people that, that I was working with. I, machine or whatever, and hook your old ass dusty ass VCR to it. Put this dusty <laughs> tape in there. I bought a VCR just so I can uh, digitize stuff like this. You know who I, I know who did stuff like this was uh, Tom Merritt was doing stuff like this years ago. And oh, I'm going to have to ask him maybe. What? You guys are like twins. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to <laughs> ask him um, what kind of legal stuff he may know about for, for this whole thing. Because I, I know we have at least... Six or seven skits on that tape. Work after years and be like, "Bah! I did say put that online. I'm gonna sue you now." We did one of the funniest things we did was we took a Star Trek episode and completely rewrote it and redubbed it. So we all had different voice acting uh, parts, and it was hilarious. 
Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> you know what else is hilarious? Would you put a fan on your mouse? Um, I don't know. If I was a company that put fans on like everything, then maybe. <laughs> Tell us about this goofy mouse. So Thermal Take has come out with a gaming mouse. Finally. <laughs> finally. You know, they they've started with their uh CP, you know, uh, PC cases. They they make power supplies, and and decided a gaming mouse. That's the next step they need to take. Oh, that's fine. Uh, and like everything else, it's got a big old fan on it, <laughs> uh, right on the front too. So like where your fingers are pointing, this yeah. big fan is is up or over your fingers. So I guess in a way, like if you're such a serious you know, raider that your sweaty palms, hey, you know, there's a cure, and it's this thermal take gaming mouse. <laughs> I tell you, it's it's like, when I saw it, K- Casey added this to the uh, to the show notes, it says, thermal take makes a gaming mouse with a fan. I'm thinking, ah, I've seen gaming mice with fans before. I thought that maybe the fan was built in, I, I forgot who did this a long time ago, but there was a fan... That, that like, and, and so the mouse had vents in it, and then the fan would sort of yeah, blow yeah. up through the You're through the mouse, like add-on kind of bandage <laughs> thing. Like you know, somebody made it in their garage and just literally duct tape a fan to the top. <laughs> Franken fan. Kluge dot com. It's I mean, awful. I mean, have you ever look? You and I are both raiders, hardcore. Well. We were hardcore raiders at one point. I haven't raided in a long time. <laughs> well, me neither. But but you Panda. and I have both been in those positions where you're you're doing a tough boss or or a tough instance yeah. or something. Have you ever sweat so much that your hand needed oh. a fan? But I don't like. I don't normally have sweaty palms, well, so I'm neither. Some people do, and also some people may or may not have a weight problem. Mm-hmm. So. You know, maybe their sausage fingers get really fucking sweaty. Oh, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I'm not going to buy this thing. It's $80, and I, I tell you, it's just like the goofiest thing I've ever seen. And I wouldn't, like, if you're a gamer and you, you go around the country playing it, I don't even know how you would pack this thing because it doesn't look like it folds in. You would have to, I don't know what you would have to do with this thing. Oh, screw it. I'm not going to buy one. Uh, South by Southwest, the, uh, the spring break for geeks has just announced the pricing of their, uh, their South by Southwest interactive ticket today, $695. I was a little off put by that. Now, the reason why is because two years ago, I think it was 425 or something like that or 450. And that was okay because you're not breaking that $500 Mm -hmm. barrier. Last year it was five ninety five, and I didn't go because Last I just. Year, I wasn't, when I was looking to go, I was looking at tickets, and I could have sworn they were like eight or nine hundred. Is that for the full thing, well, or there are two different things? Um, when you were looking at prices at the time, because because oh, they have the different tiered pricing, okay. so yeah. so it'll be it'll be now it's six ninety five. So it'll be six ninety five until September or October, and then they'll. Junk, jack it up to like maybe seven twenty five or seven fifty forty five or something like that. So, but then on top of that, there's there's like the gold pass, which is hideously expensive. That's if you want to go for film, music, and interactive. Um, oh, okay. But I just go for interactive. So, um, six ninety five, and I'm looking at that number, and I and I promised that I would go a bunch of this this year. I promised a bunch of people that I would go, and I'm going. Uh, six ninety five. But I still have the the flight credit from last year that I didn't use. This is true. As so do I. That. So I think I'll be going to South by Southwest next year. Um, hey. Here's the thing about and 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 the thing is, is like I used to be really excited about South by Southwest, but what I've seen is this trend, and I've seen other people talk about this also, is that the first couple of years that I went. It was great because the people that were going were the, per- the the people that were really passionate about their work, mm-hmm. and 
And then what happened the last, let me see, this is 2012, so it was 2011. The last couple of years, it's gotten kind of trendy to go, it's, huh? Yeah, it's, well, that too. It's gotten kind of trendy. And then there are people with their iPhone apps and, and people without iPhone apps, both, are looking for venture capitalists. And that's not what mm -hmm. South By is about. South By Southwest is about meeting people that do the same things that you do or you want to learn or you want to learn from people <clears throat> mm -hmm. that, I mean, you may be doing things and you might want to listen to Leo. Leo was there a couple of years ago. And you might want to talk to him, you know, face to face. It was it was the one time where you knew that everybody was going to be there and you can BS with them face to face and Yeah. Yeah. and hang out. Last year nobody went. I know it was weird. I hope I like I hope this year isn't more of that. Like I hope last year I don't know, was just a fluke, <clears throat> but I have a feeling that it might not be. I don't know. I'm I'm hoping. I mean, I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer. I'm sort <laughs> of hoping that the people that went the last two years got the idea that South by Southwest is not. It's, and they're you're not, not supposed go. to go to that because it's trendy. You're supposed to go to that because it's 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 an experience of learning, not for looking for venture capitalism. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what people are going to think about South by next year, but. Yeah. The other problem with this whole thing is that, yeah, like you said to me on I Am Today, it's like, er, der, you know, prices go up every year. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. But the, but the problem that I have with this is that if, if, if the price trend keeps going, in three years, it'll be $1,000 just for the interactive ticket. And that's kind of scary because what happens is now, now you're going into WWDC type pricing. And yeah. and the develop that's the Apple Developers Conference for those who don't know. And so the fifteen hundred dollar price tag on that keeps. So you hope that they actually build up the actual convention to match the pricing, or well, there are two there are two ways that this can happen. Uh, the, two things that can happen. One is that you're going to weed out the people that really want to go. But I'm thinking that the people that do go with that kind of price tag are the people that are looking for the money. Or the second yeah. thing that's going to happen is that um, maybe another convention may take oh, over, sort of like what up. happened with Blogger, um, um, Blog World in Vegas. The people mm -hmm. got sick and tired of going to Vegas, and now there's there's Blog World Expo in New York. Sometimes things split, like CES. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes things split off and splinter, and then people find uh, a better experience somewhere else. And I'm wondering if that's going to happen in South by Southwest. The 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 one major blow to, to to South by Southwest if that happens is that Austin is such an amazing city that I would hate to have to go to Vegas or somewhere to 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 go to a better kind of conference because I want it to be in Austin. I don't want it to be in L.A. Maybe San Francisco, not Vegas. I want it to be in mm, Austin. I don't think San Francisco can hold it. Mm. San Francisco is not that big. But I know I've been there a couple times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, I, I I just don't know what the fate of South by is going to be in the next few years, and um, we're, we're just going to have to see. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year, and yep. I just feel like the humanity of South by Southwest has sort of waned. Hmm. And I you know just one last thing that I want to mention is that when I was there two years ago, I remember not being able to move in the halls. And if you've ever been to the Austin Convention Center, that place is absolutely massive. And to have that many people in the hallways where you're just like feeling... Not, that was not, the con this year. That, what? Comic-Con? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. See, well, yeah, you've got the same thing with Comic-Con. You've been to the San Diego Comic-Con many times. And, and oh. you've seen it grow too. Yeah. But it's a different kind of show though. The South by Southwest was was yeah it was about like they're both they're both shows about very um, kind of niche well not really niche I mean because they both expanded to I mean Comic Con used to be niche in that it was only about comics right and then it was about comics and toys and then it was about comics toys anime sci fi you know and now it's about movies and games and mm -hmm. everything else. TV, uh, anything remotely tangentially related, um, you know, but it's still, it's still about that kind of stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's like South by a place for lovers of that 
to go and meet other people with similar interests and, you know, not only buy stuff and find rare stuff, but Mm -hmm. meet other people and, um, you know, just kind of be with people of, you know, like minds. Yeah, yeah. And and as we all know, South and San Diego Comic-Con has grown into a big media outlet. And there are mm-hmm. people that were complaining about it last year, uh, especially because of the problems with Hall H. They were saying, this is not my Comic-Con. This is not <laughs> what Comic-Con used to be. And I sort of feel that way about South By. Is that I don't want yeah. these people here. Look, I'm a developer. I have to admit that when I was there two years ago, I had an idea for an app. I was I was sort of kind of looking to see if there was anybody around, but it wasn't my. I, I, I'm just not a pitch person. It's just not in my. Uh, it's not my personality, but I just felt really icky with all these marketing people there. I was like, oh, get, get out, get out. You don't belong here. Go home. <laughs> well, speaking of marketing, <laughs> Microsoft has just come out with a new. Hotmail. Oh, what's it called? Is it Hotmail 2? Called Outlook.com. Is it Hot... Wait, what? It's a totally new email service. Outlook.com. Are you kidding me? Yes. Okay. No, I've been there. I I wrote to Casey this morning. I was like, get your email address before the land grab. Oh, no. (laughs) Let me fucking rush and and get my Outlook.com email address. I, um... Um, the first thing I did was I tried to get Starman at, Outlo- at Outlook.com and it was taken. I wasn't surprised. Uh, Queso was available. Oh, was it? Oh, lucky you. Um, uh, lucky I'll never use that email address no, ever. No, me neither. I got one too. I just like, I'm never going to use this. I and mean, if I ever wanted to do anything, I'll just switch to a different Gmail account. As of the um, the alternate security email address I put in my Mac email, oh, yeah. I'm like, this is uh, <laughs> Mac. So here's uh, a couple of things. One, again, uh, this is Microsoft being behind the times. I know that they've had Hotmail for a long time. I admit that. I, I, I realize that. But a couple of reasons why I stopped using Hotmail is one, because the web interface was just trash. And then two, the name Hotmail, maybe it was kind of cool in the 90s or something like that. But Hotmail sounds, sounds like such a dorky word now well it and, is but much like windows xp or most of microsoft stuff it's been around for so freaking long there'd be such a huge uprising for the you know five people who still use it they <laughs> um they're very you know you don't nobody wants their their email service to um just you know die and <laughs> Nobody All right. that. To be fair, I, I wrote about this in Google Plus today. The first thing I noticed about going to Outlook.com after signing up, for, well, even before that, the picture of the guy with his feet on the desk with his glow-in-the-dark laptop and glow-in-the-dark sneakers, what is Microsoft trying to tell us? <clears throat> Because that, that does not... This. Yeah, nobody... I, look, I've got two kids that are around that age. Nobody, nobody dresses like that. And young all I can, <laughs> like I said, I've got two the, kids. We've heard the young people, they do that. The fluorescent stuff? Okay. Well, anyway, nobody <laughs> I've ever seen in this area dresses like that. And and this is just yet another sign of Microsoft just not getting it. Um, I just looked at that guy's picture and I just went, oh, I don't want to be associated with that guy. But <laughs> right whatever. I even- signed up for an account. And the first thing it says is, do you want to upgrade to Silverlight? Or, or upgrade your version of Silverlight. I'm going Silverlight. Why? The of course hell? they're using. Of course they're using Silverlight. Well, I know they're using it, but I thought the first off, I thought they were phasing it out. And, Only on mobile. And, okay, and and two, why do you need it? It's like Be, why isn't the whole uh, thing written in HTML5? Awesome. Oh, it's awesome. Okay. Um. Well, because they, you know, spent a lot of time and money building, um that whole engine to compete with flash and it really didn't take off but hell or high water they're going to use it and still promote it and say no 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 this is still viable <laughs> this still has uses um see look we we made outlook.com with it so <laughs> clearly you know this couldn't have been done with anything else no. you should use silverlight you should learn to program for it it's clearly um, it's clearly superior technology. 
Um, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I I do have Silverlight because I have to use it for Netflix. All right. So, but I don't. I, the, yeah, wait, that's the only thing that the only reason I have that crap where installed on my Mac. Is yeah, for is, is for Netflix. And why Netflix is using it, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because it works. The thing is, I, I just... All right, well, let me back up a second. Silverlight, um, or I got an error on, on the Outlook.com site that said, uh, we can't use certain features because um, your version of Silverlight is out of date. But it still works. So this goes back to the whole point of like, well, why do you need it in the first place? Uh, anyway. Who cares? The, I don't know. It the um, the UI is not bad. Um, the UI for um, Outlook, the no, mail. It looks exactly like Windows Phone 7 and kind of like Windows 8. It's yeah. that slick um, 2D, very, very 2D, high contrast, sharp. Yeah. Um, like kind of almost pixel uh, uh Icons and it's nice. It's it's super nice. It's a good design for once. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm not I'm not knocking you know it because it's on those other platforms. But um, they're they're kind of trying to make everything, you know, with a unified look. Which again, kind of uh, you know, I can think of one other company who has a lot of uh, products with all a uh, unified look. That's true, and they don't use Silverlight. I know. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to spend too much time on this. No, um, I brought it up because it, it it was big today, and there are a lot of people again doing the land grab, in like Brazil or Spain or wherever all those tweets are coming. I like searched on Twitter for Outlook dot com, and they were all in either Spanish or Portuguese. Really? So yeah, you, you know where Hotmail's hot. <laughs> South America. All right. Uh, I got an email just before we started recording the show um, from Dropbox that said that they had somehow been hacked. Um, See, I didn't get this email. What the hell? I don't. You sure? Really? Maybe it's going out in waves or something. But okay. um, yeah, I, I got this email and it said uh, a small number of accounts were stolen. And uh, change your password. You have to change your password. So I did. Um, it's, they're being proactive about it, and they're not all uh, which is, pulling a pony on this. Yeah, which is fine. Um, but the point of this 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 topic is not so much about Dropbox specifically. It's more of we, we're seeing a lot of this happen lately, and mm -hmm. and the question is like, I, do you? I'm not saying you, but like the people that are listening to the show. Do you have different passwords for different sites? And yeah. I, you, you see, and I do too. So I'm really not that concerned. But earlier, years ago, I didn't do that. The problem no, with it is really earlier. I mean, years ago, you didn't need to. No. Obviously, you were seeing a ramp up in in um, this. You know, ob I mean, with Sony and then with LinkedIn and Dropbox. You know, people um, they're getting hacked all the time, and it's becoming more and more frequent. Sure. You know, more and more people are learning to hack, and and it's becoming more commonplace. So, with that comes the ne the necessary security to kind of follow up with that. So you've got to strengthen your passwords. You can't mm -hmm. just have you know Casey one two three anymore. Um, or that's what you know what my luggage. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> um, wonder why. <laughs> uh, never mind. Um, you know, you have to expand on that and also make it different for other sites. Mm -hmm. It just uh, is becoming that, just knowing what good passwords are and what good password practice is. Mm -hmm. um, if that seems too complicated to you, you know, or you can't come up with a system for yourself, you know, like I've come up with a good system where you have you know, you find a really good, complex, say, front part. Sure. And then you have a second part of that password mm -hmm. that is different for every site. And so, for me, like, you know, I, I don't have a problem remembering several, you know, different passwords because I have kind of a system Um but it, I mean, there's there's multiple products out there like One Password that right. can 
care of this for you, and I highly recommend doing that. That's what I was going to suggest because um, I started using it years ago and then I stopped. I forgot. What, oh, I remember why. It's because I, I switched from like leopard to snow leopard or, or maybe tiger to leopard. I don't remember. But it stopped working for a while and oh. I never updated it. And I think when you did have to update it, you have to pay for it. And I don't mind paying for updated software, obviously, but I think the price was like really stupid. It's like $30 or something. I just paid the 50 for it. Oh. So I felt a little pissed off about yeah. that um yeah. so i have my own way of doing it so but the thing is is um there are still other ways to figure out people's passwords especially like the the secret questions you gotta yeah. make those really vague like if you can write your own those are great because like i could be on this podcast like i've never said it but i could be on this podcast and i could say what the name of my first grade teacher was and then somebody can go over to a site and go oh first grade teacher was that well, not even yeah. that, but a lot of this stuff where they ask for um, a lot of the security questions is the stuff that people can easily find out on Facebook, on that Google too. Plus, True. you know, from your profiles, like your first car, first car, your, yeah, your, uh, where were you married, your, you know, street you grew up on. That's all stuff that people put in their profiles. Mm -hmm. And so either make those, I mean... Those are the easy questions, and I know people always pick the easiest questions, you know. Pick the more obscure ones, or make them, either make them really vague, or make them super, super <laughs> crazy specific to you, or something you'll remember. Well, there was one, uh, there was a secret question for one of the games that I play, one of the MMOs, and I, it was like, what was the strangest job you ever had? And mm -hmm. I had forgotten my password for that site at some point, and I'm, which is strange for me because I hardly ever forget my passwords. But I'm typing all these things. I'm going, what did I answer for that? Because right. I, couldn't, a, I don't have would, strange jobs. I, well, even still, like something like that, you would, I'm sure the people who are making up these security questions to put into their forms are thinking like, well... You're going to remember the strangest job you ever had. But I'm, <laughs> I would think but when you don't have that one. <laughs> answer would depend well would depend on like where you are in life like yeah. a strange job to me in my teens or my 20s is probably either not going to be strange or i'll have gotten a different strange job when i'm 40 or 50 mm -hmm. you know what i consider strange will change but also the jobs i have are yeah. going to change and then not and, only, it's not even that it's there are a couple of jobs that i had which i guess could be considered strange but you know how sometimes you can have a different title? And when you forget mm -hmm. your password, three months, four months down the road, you just go, oh, how did I word that? Right. No, exactly. Yeah. So, like, for example, my, my, um, my last oh. job, not the one that I have now, but the, my last job was, and I'm not giving anything away here, but it's like software engineer. Because I always tell everybody I was a software engineer. That's not a strange job. But I could have written down programmer. I could have, you know, if, if I were to fill it okay. in with that. And okay. so, anyway... We're sort of digressing a little bit about passwords, but um, I've been finding that one password is really good. Um, I got to get back on the ball with that. And it has a mobile app too. Um, of course, the big thing is that you have to remember your master password. <laughs> well, that helps. But yeah, I mean, I, like, like I said, you only have to remember one instead of making up your own system and remembering 10 or 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so. anyway. Moving on. Moving on to Mars. Shout out to Wheaton. Come on, Wheaton. <laughs> what about Wheaton? What about Shatner? Are they in a fight again? Yes. We have to vote for their love. Um, <laughs> NASA has made a video of Curiosity's grand entrance. Uh, Curiosity is the Mars rover. I think it's landing soon, tonight or something. Uh, April 5th. Okay, not tonight. Not even close. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> soon, anyway. So five days from now, Saturday night. Um. So they made a video, and they had they've made two versions: one that is narrated by William Shatner, mm -hmm. and one that is narrated by Will Wheaton. And then they have a little pool underneath, and you can vote for uh, whoever gave the best performance. So, did you vote? I didn't, because um, I just I just saw them quickly, and I was at work. Um, 
but I would totally vote Will Wheaton. Um, cause Shatner, <laughs> while Shatner's great, he feels, it feels like he just kind of dialed it in. He's just being Shatner. <laughs> he doesn't put any kind of emphasis in, in any of the words. Whereas Will looks really passionate. He's emphasizing, he's enunciating, there's drama in his True. voice. True. See, to me, oh, I watched both of them and they're both really, really good. And so voting for one or the other is very difficult for me because when you're listening to William Shatner talk about space exploration, it's like, that's the shat talking about space exploration. That's awesome. Then you listen. He didn't have to do anything. He just talked. Uh, like, I, I, I know, but it's just. He's Shatner. You just phone it in. But the thing about Wheaton is that, like you said, he's got a lot of passion for this whole thing, too. And, and, and he sounded really awesome. And, 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 oh, I don't know who to vote for. I'm torn. I'm very torn between them for different reasons. Mm. All right. Well, so that is it progresses. I don't know. <laughs> and the thing is, if, if you vote for Wheaton and I vote for Shatner, then they're just going to be you offset anyway. I know. Wait. So you might as well not vote, Mike. <laughs> and if I do, but then, then your boy gets a vote. <laughs> um, you know what else I'd be voting for if what? I lived in the city? Is Google Fiber. This is awesome. Um, we've kind of heard hints and, and rumors about Google Fiber, but I think it was, what, Friday or Thursday last week they announced they had a, um, a big press conference and just laid out what everything was going to be mm -hmm. and the whole plan for it. Um, so if you live in, in the Kansas City area, only right there, um, you have to, and they're they're split it split up into fiber hoods. Yeah, fiber uh, hoods. It's a beautiful yeah. day in the fiber hood. Uh, if you get Google Fiber, it will be. <laughs> uh, so every er, everybody in that area is eligible, but not everybody's getting it. And so you have to rally your fiber hood, or I guess go around and get all of your neighbors to sign this petition to kind of promise and pre-order Google Fiber and say, mm -hmm. yes, we'll sign up and I will pay for this when it comes in. If you get everybody in your little hood or block to pre-register for it, then you get it. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can sign up and you can get it. Everybody in your area has to, and then they'll lay down the infrastructure. Um but apparently, so far, I think something of seventy percent of the pre-qualified um, people in the area have already signed on. It. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying that it's going to be uh, speeds of up to a hundred mm -hmm. megabits down, which is crazy because we don't currently have hardware that supports that. <laughs> on I, was it a hundred megabits down? Cause I. I, I doesn't say. I thought it was like a hundred times what we have now. Everybody's saying a hundred times. Um, the the actual numbers are between a hundred and two hundred megabits down. Wow, jeez. Or beyond any router or modem. Well, I get thirty five. I get thirty five megabits up and down. Um, with um, with FiOS. So. I'd be very interested to see what the numbers are when people actually get it. Because you know how it is. It's like there's advertised speed and then there's real speed. But if you um, had 100 and say you get 70, mm -hmm. I'm sure that's far lower than the advertised. But are you complaining with 70 megabits oh, down? Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't complain about 70 at all. I would love to get 100 up and down. Um, yeah. When I first got uh, the reason why I got 35 up and down, because I could have gotten like 3520 or 3515. But the reason why I got 3535 is because when I'm doing these shows, and eventually I was going to move over to doing video, which mm -hmm. I haven't actually done yet. I mean, this, this, what we're doing now is video, but in a different way, okay. where people can download the MP4s. I found that the podcast used to take, eh, like maybe with my old Comcast connection, 20 or 30 seconds. Now, 20 or 30 seconds does not sound like a big deal, but in the order in which I do things, I had to wait for the podcast to upload before I can get the stats off the, off the server. Now, mm -hmm. three seconds, it just uploads. So f to get 100, 100 would just make everything just wicked instantaneous. The only downside is just like anything, um, the weakest link is always um, the problem. And the weak link could be the servers that you're trying to connect to. Um, so, True. So you may get 100, 100, but it depends on how many uh, servers can actually 
give that out. Yeah. So Google will be um, putting out their own um, modem routers, mm -hmm. uh, their own hardware to support this. And they're also uh, trying to bundle in a cable TV service. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah, because why not? Um, they don't have really all the um, channels or, you know, broadcast uh broadcasters on board it's kind of it's kind of like a not google tv but oh, i forget the name there's another um oh like over the air internet tv service you can get to replace your cable mm -hmm. where you get most but not all of the channels and the ones that you're not getting are really kind of the main ones mm -hmm. like um all the sports channels you don't get and uh, HBO and um, stuff like that. Okay. All right, moving on to the quest log, which I quest log. <laughs> um, this was very interesting. Gabe Newell from mm -hmm. Steam uh, said, and this is a quote, I think Windows 8 is a catastrophe for everyone in the PC space. I think we'll lose some of the top tier PCs and OEMs who will exit the market. And then on top of that, Rob that wasn't like a big enough bomb to just <laughs> pop in your lap. Uh, Rob Pardo from Blizzard, uh, he's the VP of Game Design, adds that it's not awesome for Blizzard either. Now people think, well, what could it be? Now, now, wh what was it that they were talking about specifically? Gaming. Gaming. I think, from what I've read. What what Gabe and and uh, and Rob were talking about specifically is is I guess gaming, but not so much in the sense I don't think in the APIs for like DirectX or anything like that. It's more of the uh, the payment system. Closed. Well, it's the um, the closed nature of Windows 8's Windows 8's Windows 8's. Why yes. does that sound? Weird That's when right. I, say it? I know Correct. it sounds weird, but it's right. Um, they're again kind of going the way of apple where they're going to have a um a marketplace mm -hmm. app store for people to download apps out of mm -hmm. and so these people like gabe and blizzard blizzard who's big enough they don't need to put themselves in any kind of app store anytime you know people will just buy directly from them and gabe with with steam which is essentially a competing app store for games mm -hmm. Um, they don't want to have to go through another app store or marketplace because a it's super uh, kind of closed DRM for them, and also you know the licensing um, isn't so great for them. And the cost, so, the thirty percent right. um, that they take away. Yeah, that's yeah, not they, good. they have their own set, you know. Of I mean, not that Steam isn't wrapped in DRM either, but. They already have their infrastructure. They mm -hmm. already have their whole setup. And Windows 8 really puts a huge wrench in the system for them. Here's what I think. And I'm a little worried about this, both on the Windows and the Mac side, is that the way that Windows... Um, I'm sorry, the way OS X works right now, because you and I do, we do the Mac shows, so, and, and we're deeply entrenched in the whole Mac OS X thing. Very deep. Is that so with Mountain Lion... You have you you have three choices in their gatekeeper system. Is that you can run uh, signed apps from the app store, you can run signed apps, or you can run pretty much anything. Where does World of Warcraft fall into that any. whole thing? It runs into any right. So that means if you want to play WoW, you, you have, have to run as a rogue, so to speak. Uh, no no pun intended. Yeah yeah, you have to have that latch totally open and be running anything which i think at least at first most people are going to be doing anyways mm -hmm. but there's, um, there's another issue to this whole thing which i have not researched but this hit me like yesterday game center are, yeah. is is is, is no, apple going to require that, blizzard to go through game center to buy stuff that would be cr <sighs> they, they might suggest it they might like it better if they were but to require like not just Blizzard, but say, you know, um, SOE or any number of um, these companies that are so big, they're not really on Steam. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
I don't think any of Sony's PC uh, MMOs are on Steam either. Or No, I don't think so. And Seasoft or, you know, a lot of the games I play, I go directly to their site, you know, and either purchase from their site or their one specific authorized vendor, which mm -hmm. usually isn't an App Store or Steam or what have you. Um, Steam is, is like a straight competitor to the app store the marketplace because a lot not all but a lot of the games they have on there are little um like kind of casual bite size mm -hmm. games you know which is really what thrives in uh the app store yeah. too it's it's a good place for little um design houses and you know little um Indie places that are just starting out to to have act to have an actual platform to compete with sure. the bigger one. Sure. And and I'm just a little worried about the, this whole space because at first, like when you're when you're talking about the App Store on the Mac side, and and we'll see what happens with Windows 8 when it's because it's not actually out yet. Things can change. But on the Mac right. side, we've seen you and I both have seen developers that are not happy with Apple's new rules. But then yeah. what can you do? If you want, if the user wants to say save, they have to run stuff that's signed. If you want yeah. to sign it, you have to go through Apple's rules. Apple's rules say that this this slick feature that you've had in your app for ten years gone because we don't want it. But isn't that always the trade off? If you want something really secure, it's going to be locked the fuck down. Uh, if you want something really, you know, crazy and. I don't yes, know. but it, then you can't have it both ways. Well, well, I think that in some cases, and, and maybe Apple will change this. As a podcaster, I've seen some audio hijacking apps not work anymore because mm -hmm. of their rules. How does audio audio hijacking cause problems in in a security system? I'm like, I don't see that happening. Is it? Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to hijack? the audio and then inject stuff through there. And I don't see that happening. It's, it's I can, I could see it happening in other spaces, but not that. Trying to stop piracy. Uh, I suppose, but I just, I don't know what's going to happen with the gaming space. And, and I just hope that, um, that both Microsoft and Apple don't restrict games that much because now we're getting in the, in the, uh, the times of free to play and microtransactions and we'll get to our next segment in a second. But if this hinders that it can cause some serious trouble in the MMO space or, or just gaming yeah. space in general. Well, gaming, gaming in general, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it seems like PC games have really been able to evolve and, um, progress w far more than console games mm -hmm. because the PC space has been more open. Console is incredibly locked down. And if you make the PC like the console, then what? Yeah, then you might as well just have a damn console. Yeah, well, I'm t w yeah, I, I don't know. Anyways, what's <laughs> going on with your beloved Spotor? <laughs> Old Republic went free to play today. And I saw it coming. I didn't see it coming this soon. What? Yeah, yeah I, uh, me too. I mean, I thought this is definitely a move they're going to have to make, but the game's not even a year old yet. Here's the thing. Um, I didn't think about this. Somebody tweeted this to me earlier today, and, and, and it finally dawned on me what the problem was. The reason why they probably pushed this is because the, the people that... Uh, sign up for the six month subscriptions. They're um, they're going away August twentieth ish, somewhere around uh -oh. there. Or August fifteenth, somewhere around there. So what they had to do to keep people from leaving is mm -hmm. they had to announce this free to play system. It's going live November twenty first, I believe. Um, and so it's going to keep the people, keep their subscribers up, and you won't have the rats fleeing the sinking ship here's the thing during the conference call today ea said that they did eventually drop below a million i said this was going to happen because of the trend and and some of the apologists were like no 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 we're going to stay over a million because it's the most successful mmo ever and eh, yeah. no you're wrong and and sure enough they said it dropped below a million but they said it's well above five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand is the keep That's afloat a big number 
difference. <laughs> it's a big difference. But the thing is, is that they went from two million to one point three, now under a million. So I'm thinking the the term True. well above. What does that mean? Eight hundred thousand ish. Five fifty. <laughs> Well, well above doesn't seem to be 550, but maybe. Who knows? I mean, they could be spinning it for uh, all I know. But yeah. um, well above, to me, is at least 650,000, maybe 700. So if more and more people are dropping like flies, they're going to mm-hmm. hit that, that, that happy spot of 500,000 very, very fast. And yeah. so they had to do some damage control. And yeah. they announced it today. I, I, I'm a little worried about this because they got rid of all these people in Old Republic yeah. and Bioware. Yeah. And now they're focusing on, they're going to have to throw some people onto this whole free to play system that's got to be implemented. That's not right. And not, if they don't do that right, I mean, we've seen free to play systems go horribly wrong mm-hmm. and we've seen them done very well. Um, so that, that can be like another whole kind of tipping point on its own yeah you know maybe they'll keep people around with the whole free to play awesome that sounds great but then if that free to play system you know once implemented is a pile of crap Mm -hmm. um that's not going to stop people from leaving no because all you got to do is just hit that unsubscribe button and you're done but if there's no subscription oh i see what you're saying you know if it's free they're, they're not probably not going to cancel their account they'll just not come back yeah so maybe they'll they'll have a high subscriber number but you know their what their active player number is mm-hmm. not gonna be hot um i'll talk about this more on um sith heads with nicole i uh, think we're recording on thursday um because there's a lot a lot 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 more uh to this whole thing than than just this but um I'm just very surprised that a AAA title um, had this happen. And Bioware made two big, big mistakes. Number one, I tweeted about this earlier today. The biggest problem um, was that when, uh, last summer, it's a year ago now, when a whole bunch of us were beta testing the game, and we wrote to Bioware and we said, the game is great, but there is nothing to do when you hit 50. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. If you don't fix this, you're going to have some serious problems. And I'm telling you, the apologists, which were just completely blind to the problem, most of them were MMO vets like myself that have been around forever. To this day, I can log into World of Warcraft eight years later and still do stuff from vanilla that I never finished. That's mm-hmm. that's the kind of game that this is. Or, or not, I should say. EverQuest 2, same thing. EverQuest 1, same thing. Terra, same thing. If you don't have content for people to do at 50 and... Meaning stuff that you can leave around, like for example, uh, doing um, doing faction, uh, raising your factions in WoW. Let's say, let's just throw mm-hmm. that on the table, or just running molten core for transmog gear. That's the kind of fun stuff that older public needed. The second mistake that they made related to this is that they said that they were surprised that so many people got to fifty so fast. And I'm thinking, who did your damn research? There I are know. people out there. People that, do that in a matter of days. Yeah. I got to 50 in under four weeks without even trying and taking five days off. Yeah. It was not that hard to do. Um, and so, again, the apologists were saying, well, you shouldn't have gotten to 50 so fast. It's like, well, okay, well, uh, let's say I got to 50 that's today. horrible. Just horrible blaming the users. Yeah, let's say I got to 50 today. It's eight months later. Let's say I got to 50 today. The same problem. There's still nothing to do. Occur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rolling, they're rolling out updates were way too slow to yeah. to fix other you know little issues even. But so, anyways, I'm anyways. sure you know we could talk at length on that. Um, speaking of uh, consoles and open source, two things you usually don't hear together. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh O-U-Y-A. yeah. O u y a. It's a currently a Kickstarter project still. It's an open source gaming console. It's running Android, and um, they've already passed their goal, um, but it's still got eight days left, so they're just going to let it, you know, keep going. Why not? Mm-hmm. Um, they've announced as one of their launch titles Final Fantasy III. Not bad. That's pretty huge. 
Um, yeah. Final Fantasy 3 was just revamped for iOS, and I think the Nintendo recently, I think for the DS. Um, I have it for iOS. It's very good. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's no, it's better than the old Nintendo version. Um, to have a Final Fantasy title at launch, and for Square Enix to say that they like this system like, and they're gonna Square is is the surprising, you know, usually the bottleneck in these things. Yeah, I, I to be honest, I think they should have put out maybe five or six instead of three. But three is good. I mean, I'm, no, I'm just I, nitpicking I, Final Fantasies here, but I know you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's good, but you know, that's a really old I know. title. Well, they so. weren't gonna put out seven. I know that. Uh, because that's coming out for the PC soon. Um, oh, yeah. So three, I guess, is sort of a happy medium there. Um, I've been like I, I've been hearing about this on and off. Like I haven't done any real research on it until maybe just before the show. So this whole thing is based on Android, mm-hmm. and the whole thing is open source. So from the operating mm-hmm. system to the hardware, mm-hmm. and on the website for the Kickstarter um, system, it says. Hackers welcome. And and I was a little worried about that because if they're saying that you can hack the system, I'm wondering how this is going to have multiplayer implications. Because people are going to find it. There are always people that are going to find ways to exploit the systems. Yeah, yeah. So they're giving you, in a sense, like a really kind of cheap little media box. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, instead of hacking like your Apple TV or Google TV or whatever to run... Um, you know, your media center or games or what have you, this will already do it. And they're just saying, hey, if you find a better use for it or you want to put more stuff on it, mm-hmm. feel free. It's all yours. Whatever. And we don't- when, we, when we were doing pre-show, I said to Casey, I was like, well, what's the whole point of this? Because all the AAA titles are going to wind up going to the, the big three anyway. You brought up a really good point, which I had known for years, but I just didn't put two and two together, is that, the, the biggest problem with being a developer is that if you want to put out a game on a console, you can't. Not without that big, giant wall of developer like fees and... Huge, huge licensing fee. Yeah. I mean, huge. And if you want to put out an update to that game, it's... Okay, say, like, putting out an actual game is somewhere around, like, 400000 mm-hmm. which is about accurate for, you know, a major title on it on a... Xbox sure. or uh, PS3. An update to that would be about, so like, you know, Uncharted 2 or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like 200000 Yeah. I so- mean, these are huge fees. And that's on top of the actual development, paying the programmers, paying the artists, you know, yeah. all the overhead associated with making that game. And those games, like, you know, Uncharted or... Um, what have you, Assassin's Creed, you know, whatever, name, you know, any number of games mm-hmm. that are, are like high budget, high production movies now. Oh, sure. So there are huge costs uh, uh, just associated with production there. And then it's, you know, dealing with the console manufacturers. It's um, just huge. But for a long time, that was the only way to do it. So that was your barrier. Yeah. And, um, well, what people are doing now is they're using iOS as their platform to doing their yeah. independent games, which is which is mm-hmm. great. Um, which is fantastic. Yeah, I I like the idea of this device. I'm I'm curious as to how well it'll do because, like I said, I people have got the big three. Are. We've got um, a new Xbox around the corner. We've got the Wii U around the corner. I don't know really what's going on with Sony just yet. They said that it's not going to be <laughs> called the PS4. Another, another year. Yeah. If not, more. so what's going to happen with this thing? I mean, Final Fantasy three is great, but like, why aren't we getting Uncharted three? Or why are we? You know, that's that's well, the sort of thing. Like, I who's mean, gonna... those, those big budget ones that I named, they're not on like the the other platforms. I could see like the um, the App Store or the Marketplace or you know Android or what have you. I see this console being. Essentially, you know, a console for those games, like mm-hmm. mobile games, um, casual games, you know, the the indie ones, the the smaller ones, sure. the ones you download on the Wii or Xbox from the marketplace that are either retro or just really small budget. The big budget ones, you know, they're still, even though there's 
huge fees associated yeah. with um, going out to Xbox or PS3, there's also huge returns too. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna keep an eye on this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna get one. It's gotta have more than Final Fantasy three for me to get it. That's the thing. It's, it's like most people yeah, may have it on iOS. I'm and kind Android. of intrigued and just you know the hard. I mean, if the hardware alone is pretty awesome and it's easy to hack, then I might just get one to play around with it. Maybe if it's not too expensive, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll right. If it's it like a couple hundred bucks, then what the hell, you know? Yep. All right, we're moving on to our geek of the week. Yay! I was digging up old EverQuest one sounds, and that was just awesome. Um, all right, so you pick this one. You you talk about it first. All right, so our geek of the week this week is Leo Laporte. <laughs> Yay! Um, I mean. Like most of our geeks, he could be a geek of the week every week and any week, but specifically this week because, and it's uh, almost over actually, sorry. Um, oh, tonight, yeah. he uh, was actually doing a uh, Ask Me Anything on Reddit. It started tonight at 8 p.m., and it's about 8.58 now. Um, but these Ask Me Anything threads have uh, really kind of um, gotten more and more popular mm-hmm. and more and more. I guess internet celebrities have been doing them where, you know, they just literally will just sit on Reddit and answer whatever. Whatever. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome. And, you know, I've loved Leo since the tech TV days. Um, yeah. You know, you can't go wrong with him. There are pictures of my kids when they were like really little. And they're in the background on TV is tech TV of some kind. Oh, ZDTV, I thought you were Tech TV. Kids with Leo Laporte, you no, know. Well, another- Leo's, there are some pictures of Leo in there, too. I, oh, you know, <laughs> did I tell you about the time I met Leo Laporte and Robert Scoble was there, too, and Annie Anako and, you know, all these people that I've met and you haven't. <laughs> um, yeah, if it wasn't for Leo, I think that uh, there are a lot of people in the tech industry that just wouldn't be here. And for me, I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing now if it if it wasn't for um, seeing somebody talk about tech in such a passionate way like he does. And now he's got this team of people with uh, with the Twit Brick House, and I, it's just going amazingly well for him. So we, yeah. you know, I think he's we, gone from being on tech TV to being fired and having nothing to building Twit from the ground up, you know, in a little cottage. To now, um, the brick house is a year old, mm-hmm. and it's a huge, legit production studio. I mean, they turn out; they're starting to turn out now um, HD video podcasts, mm-hmm. and the video is stunning. Like it's insane high quality, and better than they ours. Do is fantastic. Oh, yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're done. Are we done? I think I it think is we're done. Steamy in here, Jesus it's Christ. Steamy. Um, yeah, it's hot in here too, with the air conditioner on because I got all this gear running. All right, <laughs> if you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is you do it. I am at Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O. The Casey, not the cheese. <laughs> you can email us thenexicon at gmail dot com. We're at thenexicon dot com, and we're on the. FB, we're on the Goog, we're everywhere, are, everywhere. All over the internets. All right. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. What do you like? I like ham. All right. <laughs> and sauce.